Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on creating this text uh, paper effect, which was a request from one of my patrons. It's based on a tutorial, a uh, Photoshop tutorial that I'm going to put the link uh, in the description. And it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, uh, but the key here is we want to keep the entire image in vector format. So we want to achieve this look, but without using any raster conversion. And one thing I do want to point out before we get started, I do try to be very intentional about the pace of when I'm doing a tutorial, but I totally understand that for some people it can be too fast. So one of the things I would recommend is to check out in YouTube uh, has the ability for you to change the playback speed. So you can always adjust that if you feel like I'm moving too quick for you following along. All right, let's get to it. So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is just create a new material that is a gradient. And part of the reason is, is because we're going to use this both for the gradient fill of the text, but also the background. And you can, um, you know, you what I would recommend is having, you know, the, 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 uh, the gradient be dark to light, right? Instead of just being like color to color, uh, to create sort of the 3D text effect and as if there's like shadows being created um, whatever whatever level of colors you choose uh, i would just recommend that there's a pretty good contrast between the ends so i have pure white pure black and then sort of this beige brown sort of mid-tone here so with that selected what I'm going to do actually is change its uh, orientation. And, and part of this is because what we're gonna wanna do is have some consistency in the direction of our source light. And so for the way I'm going to be drawing the text, I'm going to presume that my primary light source is coming from the top left and shining down to the bottom right. So accordingly, I'm gonna have my background kind of mimic that sort of direction. And then I can just use the fill, flood fill, and fill the background. So now I've got my sort of initial gradient for the background. So now we're gonna add our text. We're gonna click on the text tool to bring that up. And uh, what we're going to be doing is creating each letter on a different layer. And you'll see why in a little bit. And it has to do with how the gradient is applied to the text. So uh, just clicking this, and clicking on my scene, the the font we're going to be using is Disco Deck, uh, and that's primarily because the reference tutorial used Disco Deck, and I think it was smart to do so because this is definitely a text that lends itself well for this kind of effect. So, first letter, type it out, and in this case, uh, want to switch. Uh, what what my fill is and I don't really want a border so we have that fill gradient I have there and then I have my text now uh, for this scene I think I would like it to be a little bit bigger and then we'll resize it you know finally in the end but I guess with my resolution I'm gonna go with 200 so there I have my first letter but since we're gonna keep all the letters on separate layers I need to create a new vector layer and then with that layer selected, grab the text tool again, and then type my next letter. And I wouldn't worry about alignment at this point. Um, we'll, we'll fix that with some of these tools in a second, but uh, just getting the letters on the page for now. So creating a new vector layer for the last letter. And what you'll see is I'm clicking on the pick tool whenever I finish typing a letter because then it allows me to arrange it as a vector object. And so also while we're in this mode, what we can do is kind of select everything, select all the letters. There we go. And we get these object alignment uh, utilities. So for example, if I want all of these to be aligned on the bottom, I can click on this and you can see it just leveled all of the letters so that they're aligned with each other. If I wanted to evenly space them out, I could say distribute horizontal left, or if you wanted it to be off the right side, you could do it that way. With 
with text, it's going to be a little bit less obvious because it all is going to depend on how the, the border is put around each letter that it may, th these may be more or less predictable than you would expect. Um, I do want them to be a little bit closer to each other, so I am going to manually move them a little bit closer to each other and then do the, do the, uh, a line across the bottom. One other tip I'll mention is if you want to do really refined movements and placements when you have the pick tool selected on an object, you can just use the arrow keys to move them like one pixel over at a time. So you can do really refined adjustments with that method. So now that they're all kind of adjacent or touching one another, I can select them all and then do a line to bottom. Now. Let's say I wanted this whole thing to be centered in the middle of the image, but still their relative positions are the same. You know, it th you would think you'd be able to do this, but what that does is put them all together in the center of the image. That's not what I want. So what we can do, though, is if we create a new layer group and we move all those letters into the layer group just by dragging them, then if we select the layer group and then do this, it has the effect of moving all the letters while preserving their relative positions to one another. So this is good. We've got our letters on our background. So now what we want to do is create that sort of shadowed paper effect. And we're going to do that one letter at a time. So starting with, I'll just start with the M actually making sure that's selected and then what we're going to do is go to the fill property so what you'll notice when you have a gradient is there's a lot of different ways that that gradient can be represented this like sort of diamond shape the the sort of circular shape and then this interesting sort of gradient uh you know arc arc gradient path uh that's going on here i always kind of wondered to myself when would i ever use that uh, but in this particular case, this is the one that we are using, and somebody, some smart person came up with a really cool way to use that. So um, I don't seem to have the right gradient selected, so I'm going to... So it seems like my gradient changed on me at some point, so I am going to fix that real quick. So we can very simply do that by clicking down here on the color that I would have expected to be white. And in here, I can click this and change it to white. And now I think I have a little bit more reflective of what I was expecting my color to be. So then we can switch back to the radial sort of distribution of this. And so um, you can kind of already see the effect that it's having when you're adjusting this angle, right? Like you can see that it's representing itself in here and and so what we're wanting to do is we can click the middle this middle dot here and move this around and that has the effect of changing where the center of sort of this radial effect is and then the handle is what changes the you know rotation right of it so uh in this case uh there's a lot of different ways and this is where the creativity comes in of how you want this to look but if you're going for you know the paper look then as long as you're having your original light source, like we talked about earlier, consistent across all the letters, it's going to have that effect. So in this case, I think this is where I want the line to be for my M, but it's kind of the light source is inverted. So then what I can very simply do is just click this inverted box. And then now we can see, hey, look, the light is actually shining more this way and casting a shadow that way. I'm going to change this angle just a little bit and maybe bring this down. All right, so the M is done. And so now we're gonna move on to the next letter. Let's go to the S. Perhaps by clicking on the specific letter and then clicking on its fill. So once again, now selecting my beige color again and radial, and then we'll wanna move this over to see the effect of what we're doing. And so the way this kind of works is you, you have to be a little bit specific for each one of your letters. Like the, the radial fill isn't going to be exact in all cases. So like in this case, I'm going to want this line to line up with 
the, you know, where the top of this S is. And then if we zoom in, then we can kind of see, yeah, so then this line here now like creates sort of like as if there's a shadow being cast on the lower part of the S. So then now we can move on to the P. Same approach, click on the fill color. Maybe we'll leave this on this side and select the gradient to use, change it to radial. And again, uh, just identify what, you know, what angle is going to get you the effect that you're looking for. And then also how do you adjust the, the center point? So like in this case, you know, maybe, maybe there is good, and you can do refined adjustments with these dialog boxes here. Like if I want to increase, you know, again by one, I guess what it would call one unit, which seems to be greater than a pixel. So it doesn't, in my opinion, it doesn't line up too well here in this case. But what I can do is just bring it down a little bit lower and then maybe adjust the angle slightly so that now it kind of lines up a little bit more and has that sort of curved look. So there we have sort of our radial fill applied to our radial gradient fill applied to our letters. And it already is creating that sort of three dimensional effect. And what the other key part is everything is still vector, right? We haven't converted anything to raster to create any of the effects. So next what we can do to create even more separation between the letters is we can apply a layer style. And in here, I'm just going to choose like a drop shadow and let's turn on preview on image so it becomes a little bit more obvious. And I'm gonna set these both to zero just so that it's more like the shadows right behind the letter and then maybe just increase its size a little bit, decrease its opacity. And that just gives the letter a little bit of separation with the background and maybe even the surrounding letters. So now we've got the M set and now one of the newer features in PaintShop Pro is being able to right click and say copy layer styles and then paste it on other layers. And that's essentially the effect, um, how you can create it in PaintShop Pro. If you wanted to make all the letters a little bit larger relative to your scene, you can select the whole group and then drag it and then once again hit center on the position and you don't lose any fidelity because these are vector graphics. All right, well that's it for me. If you have any questions or would like to suggest content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like to get updates of new content that I post, click the subscribe button on the screen. And if you'd like to support me and the channel, check out my Patreon page, which is also shown on the screen. And I'll see you guys next time.